Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 88 of the platform specific series of my ZX assembly programming tutorials. We're looking at interrupt driven music on the ZX Spectrum today, 48K. We're using beeper sound, which is why this sounds rather crappy. Now, the music's being played by my um, Chibi Tracks and Chibi Sound Pro sound software. The Chibi Sound Pro is the sound driver, this is the beeper version. There's an AY version for the Spectrum as well, but this is a sort of minimal example. So, what we're doing today is we're driving an interrupt based music, and we've also got sort of graphics and keyboard input running. Um, this is an extension of the Mintile example I did in the past. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to look at how to get an interrupt driver working on the Spectrum 48K. The problem with the Spectrums is basically that um, we don't have the ability to use interrupt mode 1 because there is a fixed sort of ROM area in the low area of the system and we may want to avoid using the um, firmware at all. So we need to write our own interrupt handler and we need to use interrupt mode 2 to do that. And interrupt mode 2 is a little bit hard to use. But if we do things right, we can make it do what we need. The way interrupt mode 2 works is that a address will be selected from the address made up of a combination of the I register and also a byte which is sent by the hardware connected to the Z80. Now these two bytes will make an address and then an address is read from that address and a jump occurs to that address which is the interrupt handler designed to cope with that particular piece of hardware that has caused an interrupt. That's the theory of interrupt mode 2 but actually that isn't usefully what actually happens on the spectrum. What basically happens on the spectrum is any address within the range of 257 bytes from the I register, so picking a very specific example, if the I register contains the value 80, a pair of bytes will be read from the range 8080 to 80FF. Of course, this will include 81 zero zero as well because of a pair of bytes. Now that becomes the address that is executed and so the combination of those two will be the final address and because we don't know whether the, the bytes will be read from an odd boundary or an even boundary we need all of the bytes to basically be the same. Now all of this is I understand it's very confusing but the, the good thing is that there's a very simple way of relatively simple at least, a way of making this work in a practical way on the ZX Spectrum. What we do is we load in from the range 8000 onwards, 257 bytes, containing 81. So whatever address is read from, we end up executing the address 8181. And at that address, we either put our interrupt handle, or in the case of our example here, just a simple jump to the actual code that's going to do the job. Now that does leave about 80 bytes spare between 8100 and 8181, but um, we can worry about that some of the day. We could use those for maybe the um, stack pointer, for example, but um, for, for this example, we will just leave this blank. As I say, that is the easiest way of using interrupt mode 2 on the ZX Spectrum. There is some tricks where you can use, I believe, parts of the ROM and things, but I'm told they aren't reliable if you, if you, you, uh, if you use other addresses within the ROM and things to try and trick it to use the interrupt mode 2. That way, I'm told that that can become unpredictable because of the different Spectrum ROMs available. So this is the way we're going to do things today, and it does work. This is how I did this interrupt handler within chi the Chibi Akamas games, so it is it's at least practical. So our example code today loads at memory address 6000 in it's the Spectrum memory. So uh, we've got a lot of um, sort of code there before the 8000 range. So so we've got an org statement here at a, a position that is going to be before memory address 8000. And then what we've got is a DS, and this is just a defining, uh, the equivalent of about 400 bytes for our interrupt um, code that's going to do the interrupt mode to a handler. Now we could define a, a bunch of 8-1 bytes here, but I thought it would be better to actually do this in software so that um, so that we had an example that could run from anywhere in memory and you know, it's just assume that's any old garbage at the address we actually need to do our interrupt handler. So how do we actually define our interrupt handler for the interrupt mode to uh, handle then? So what we're going to do is we're going to use an LDIR statement and we're going to ba basically do a total of effectively 101 in hexadecimal bytes, but we are going to write the first byte manually and the, all these bytes are going to contain the value 81 in hexadecimal and that's so that whatever address is selected by the interrupt mode to interrupt, the final call will occur to memory address 8181. So that's why we're loading that in there. So we just do an LDIR, filling that entire range um, with that 81 there. And then what we need to do is we need to put our actual interrupt handler 
at the memory address 8181 and onwards. Now we're actually going to put a jump for simplicity, so we're just going to put the C3, which is the jump command, and then the address of our interrupt handler, which is called rather unimaginatively interrupt handler. So that is now actually going to cause a jump whenever the interrupt occurs to the interrupt handler that we've written. We then set interrupt mode 2 because usually the interrupt mode 1 will be the default on the ZX Spectrum and then we just enable interrupts and then our interrupt handler will get the V-blank interrupt and then we can update the sound. So that's relatively simple but that's how we create an interrupt handler for interrupt mode 2. Now interrupt mode 0 I believe is effectively useless in 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 every case I've heard of on the Z80. Interrupt mode zero, you push a byte onto the Z80 bus and it will actually execute that byte. And I believe that the idea is you could put hardware on the Z80 that can push an OST command on, as a, and cause those interrupts. But I've never heard of a practical use for that on a Z80 based computer. Um, interrupt mode two is generally not very use, very very um, convenient. But in the case where you need to use interrupts and interrupt mode one is not possible because you can't. Interrupt mode one always causes a an execution to memory address zero zero three eight, and that is not a that is a ROM address with a very complex interrupt handler already in place. So we're bypassing it with this interrupt mode two one. Okay, so that's our interrupt handler. Let's just take a look at the code. So the interrupt handler itself doesn't have a lot to do. All we need to do for the spectrum is enable interrupts and return at the end. Um, for the Chibi Track sound software, we're just backing up all of the registers that it uses. So the accumulator, B, C, D, E, H, L, I, and I, X. It doesn't use I, Y. It doesn't use the shadow registers. So we're doing that. We're not using the shadow registers. We could use the X, X here, except the um, the main code, the um, Mintile graphics routines, do use the shadow registers. So um, for convenience, it's, it's better to push these on the stack here rather than try and use the shadow registers here and have to disable interrupts every time we wanted to use them. Now with this code, there's not really anything else we need to worry about. We don't use stack misuse with this example, so we don't need to disable interrupts when we're doing our drawing. Now the final thing we are going to discuss though is the Chibi Tracks software. Now the software itself is split up into two parts. There is the Chibi Tracks music player, which is multi-platform, and there's the Chibi Sound Pro platform specific driver. And as I say, there is an AY driver that will work on the Spectrum 128K if you want to target that platform. But this is the very crude version that just uses the internal beeper. Now, Chibi Tracks uses the Fraction 16 and the Tweener. These are for calculating the in-between tones as the pitch shifts. And then we've got a song file here. Now, Chibi Sound Pro needs some memory of its own, and the Chibi Tracks does as well. So we're defining some RAM here at this memory address here, and we need about 128 bytes. Some of those are used for the um, Chibi Sound Pro driver, about 64 bytes in some cases, and some is used for the actual song parameters for Chibi Tracks itself. And we're defining pointers to those just here. Generally, though, we don't need to worry about any of these except for the song bass. Now, we do have some extra features that we can enable and disable for Chibi Tracks and Chibi Sound Pro. Allow relocation allows the file to be the music file to be loaded to a different destination address than the one it was compiled to. Within the uh, music file itself, there are some addresses pointers to various parts, like the instruments, for example, that are um, in encoded in the binary file but if we enable relocation it will calculate the change as required it makes it a little bit slower but not very much i would suggest you have it enabled allow speed change allows you to change the playback speed of the song you might want this if you're having like a super mario game where when you're running out of time the game speeds up also good if you're if you've got a song that needs to play at the same speed on 50 and 60 hertz systems because um, the the speed of the interrupts may be different in those cases so um, you can enable that if you want Use beeper, that is um, turning off the AY and ZX Spectrum code and enabling the beeper cruder version you heard today. Now the beeper code is basically being hand cranked by the processor. The processor has to do the entire job of building the sound wave. I've covered beeper. If, if you see my um, Chibi Sound Pro tutorial on the beeper speaker, I covered how that works. But basically um, the processor is doing all the work. And so when there is no sound currently being played, there is an option to actually pause the processor so that the playback speed is consistent if you're not using interrupts. However, we are using interrupts so the play speed will be consistent whatever the process whatever the um, sound routine does so we don't need that um, delay when there's no sound playing so we enable no silent pause to disable that sound, that pause now single channel beeper is relating to how the beeper is deciding what to play 
the the beeper can only make one sound at a time or at least it only that's all i'm just trying to make it do but um chibi tracks is designed for three channel sounds so we have two options we either ignore channels two and three that is perfectly legitimate i always use channel one as the most important but the other alternative is to look at all three channels and to play the first loudest one so if channel one isn't playing we'll play the sound that channel two is playing if channel one and two aren't playing anything or channel one is very quiet and channel three is very loud we'll play channel three's sound and so single channel beeper would disable that functionality you know when you only ever play channel one but by disabling that we get something more like what the sound is supposed to sound like because we'll get the minor sound effects like drums when there are no major sound effects like the main um, main tune, main melody. SMS transpose, uh, rather unfortunately named, the, the transposition of the um, sounds was originally for the master system. This basically removes one of the octaves. A lot of the systems can't really do very low pitches. And so by shifting the octaves up by one, you get better sound, better sounds, but the pitch is wrong. So I've turned that on because it helps in this case. Okay, so how do we actually start Chibi Sampo and Chibi Tracks? Well, um, the first thing we have to do on the Spectrum is, is a bit of a special case. Because the processor is doing all of the dirty work of playing the sound, we need to tell it how long to actually spend making the tones. So we've set it to 3 here, which is a very short tone. Now if I set this to 7 instead, and I run again... Now, you, you might hear there that the sound is actually a little bit better. Now basically, every time I increase the length of the, of the tones, you can, you can now hear, now we're up to 15, the tones actually sound very good. But because more and more of the CPU power is being used up making the tones, the, the interrupt handler is taking longer and longer to execute, so our gameplay will be getting slower and slower. So this is a question of how, how much time do you want to spend making the tones and how how poor quality are you willing to accept as as being usable? Now, I think three is the bare minimum. I, I think that is just about okay. Um, very few Spectrum games actually played music while it was gameplay anyway, so I, I thought I was doing fairly well getting anything to play, even if it sounded rather crappy. So that's what we've done there. Now, the sound cache is used by the, um, the Chibi Sound Pro sound driver to decide which channel to play. So we're just initializing it to zero here, wiping all the bytes there, just because we don't know whether there'll be some garbage data in the address we're using there. Chibi Sound Pro init will do the initialization of the platform specific sound driver. Then what we do is we load the address of the song we want to play into song base and we run start song. And we want to do that before the interrupt handler starts playing the music. So we, we've got that setting up there to get the music ready. And of course, um, our Chibi tracks play will actually update the music itself. And that's really all you need to do. I, I mean, obviously, you don't need to use my um, music software. I, I'm not saying my music software is the best. Um, honestly, Arcus Tracker is better. But um, my software was designed to be simple enough to port to large numbers of systems. And um, I wanted something of my own that was simple enough for me to you know, get working on as many systems as I required. So um, as I say, the interrupt handling example will work fine, whatever you're trying to use it for, whether you're trying to use it for um, you know, do, playing your music or whether you're just doing trying to do other timed events, controlling the speed of your game so that it runs consistently, however many sprites are on the screen, that kind of thing. Anyway, as I always go to the website, download the example code, the build scripts, and use it in anything you can. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.